What? What's going on? Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to the Emlyn in the Mix show, season five. Episode 14, we are checking out Korg Gadget 3 today, the desktop version for Mac OS. We're going to just make a little track in it. I'm going to give you my thoughts and feedback, and we'll check out some of the new actual gadgets that are inside this Korg Gadget 3 update. Now, if you've been following me on YouTube or any of my socials, you'll know that I'm a big Korg fanboy, and Korg Gadget 3, this update, is absolutely no exception. Now, it is, of course, also available on the iOS uh, portable platforms such as your iPhone and iPad. And it's really cool on that. We'll do some videos on that in a future update, but I just wanted to show you the desktop version today because it is actually really powerful as a DAW of choice. Now, personally, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't normally use the door, the Core Gadget door desktop version. I like to use the VST plugins inside my DAW of choice, which is Ableton Live these days. But, uh, and what is really cool is it actually works. I haven't got the multi-camera is set up today, but it does work in my Control S49 and they show up as gadgets, which is freaking amazing. Uh, with this update, they updated to, of course, Korg VST3. So it does have that extra layer of communication if you have one of those control keyboards by Native Instruments, but I digress. Anyway, we're gonna check out Korg Gadget 3 today, whether you like it or not. Uh, make sure to leave a like if you enjoy this video today. It definitely helps out the algorithm and other people finding this channel and checking out the goodness that I'm going to be showing you today. And hit subscribe if you haven't already. What is this show about? Yes, this show is about music technology, software and hardware. We cover new software and hardware on a weekly basis. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much what we do. Quick shout out to our sponsor for today. It is, of course, come from Native Instruments, and there is a sale on right now for Contact 7. Now, Contact 7 is absolutely one of my favorite sampler rompler instruments. It's not really a sampler rompler instrument anymore. It does so much more than just being a sampler. But you got to check out Contact 7. It's actually half price right now. Now, don't know how long this deal is going to go for, but if you click the link down below, it is an affiliate link, and hopefully you click it in time to get 50% off Contact 7. It is one of the world-leading instruments, and a lot of people make instruments for it in terms of, sorry, software plugins, not an instrument standalone, but it is a software plugin instrument. If you haven't heard of Contact 7, maybe you've been living under a rock in the world of music production, that is. But of course, if you are new to music production, I do not blame you if you do not do not know what this actual plugin instrument is. Click the link down below to get Contact 7 at the moment at half price. And if that half price is gone, then I'm sorry. You gotta be quicker. You gotta be more zeitgeisty. You gotta be just all over Emlyn in the mix on a weekly basis. So make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's get stuck straight into the goodness of today's show. So what is called Gadget 3? Or what is called Gadget? So essentially, Cog Gadget, you have these things which are called gadgets, which are basically like plugins, right? Little instruments that you can put in and it's a clip-based DAW or DAW, however you want to say. We're just going to say DAW moving on from here. Uh, clip-based production, much like Ableton Live. So you sort of work downwards. It's slightly different though. Uh, you work vertically and downwards. You'll see anyway when we get into the actual production side of things. But yeah, you got these more or less. You got these little gadget things. So here, for example, you got one called London, which is a PCM drum module. It's really good, very handy to make some beats. We'll probably kick off the show with a London, get a beat down, then we'll come up with some ideas for some musical ideas. Marcel is a polyphonic synthesizer. You got Berlin, which is a monophonic synchronized synthesizer. Chicago tube bass machine, which is like a TB303 emulation. So you can do that squelchy sort of acidy techno sort of vibes with that. You got Phoenix polyphonic analog synthesizer, Miami, which is the monophonic wobble synthesizer. You got a bunch basically. I'm not going to read back every individual one, but check this out. Look how many gadgets there are. You got so many good ones. You got even drum ones like that. Dublin is a monophonic. Amsterdam, PCM, SFX, Sound Boombox, really some really creative stuff. Digital synthesizers, you name it, they're all here. I love actually this one here, the Helsinki, which is a polyphonic ambient synthesizer. Now, if you do head over to the website, which I'll have a link for down below, you can actually click on the SoundCloud uh, links or the Korg links that they've got here via SoundCloud and have a listen back to these instruments. But we're just going to show you. Also, I always forget to mention this at the start of my show. I 
I always have a timeline down below if you just want to skip past the rambling, skip past this overview section of what's actually included and your specifications, you can get straight into the goodness of me potentially trying to make a beat. We'll, we'll see. I, I, am I experienced enough to make a beat? We'll see on the show today. I, I'm still learning. I still know that I don't know much about music pr production and technology. I'm just here to ramble and give you the goodness. That's all it is. That's my show. I can do what I want. Um, bass effects processes. You got processes on boards and effects on boards. You do have a sampler, of course. You got more drum modules. Man, the list goes on. Now, what I guess I want to show you, for those who might be watching and thinking, oh, what is actually new? So if we go down to the bottom here, I don't actually know if it's going to show me this. This is just my guess that maybe the new one's going to be down the bottom. Fingers crossed. Uh, I do want to talk about those two in a sec too. It's actually got these 16 bit, it's got the 16 bit drum machine and the arcade synthesizer, which I think uses like the engine from some old school 90s arcades, which is really, really fun. So we'll try and show you that today. I do want to also just quickly say that I'm probably not going to be able to show you every single gadget on today's show, except for now, of course, as we scroll through. Okay, so the new ones, here we go. I'm pretty sure Sydney, the loop sampler machine, let's try and look at this today. That's new to Core Gadget 3 and Santa Ana rhythm guitar machine is also new. Type A is just a MIDI out control module so you can uh, plug your external MIDI in and out. Uh, Core Gadget 3 plugin comparison charts. So there's all your plugins showing you comparison between PC and Mac. I don't know, it's weird that they don't show you on the website here what is new, but I'm pretty, I'm 100% certain these last two here are the new additions in this update. But other than those sort of new core gadget additions, they've actually, the actual overall software has been worked over and it actually is freaking like a lot better in my opinion. It was always good always smooth and powerful and really like if you just need to get a beat or an idea down quickly core gadget really has your back covered especially in the portable versions with the ipad version which i love now and then sketching a beat or just coming up with an idea it's really really quick to do it on the ipad version uh, but the desktop version is really powerful and definitely feels a lot smoother all right so with all that in mind let's go over and let's attempt to make a song inside the updated beautiful GUI GUI here of the Core Gadget Door. So we are using, essentially using Core Gadget 3. I'm not using Ableton Live. I'm not using any third party doors here. We're just going straight through Core Gadget 3. All right, so let's kick off the show today. Let's pop a London in here. Now I'm going to remove that Spotify banner, but yes, we are on Spotify. We're also on YouTube, so you can listen to us on Spotify though as well. Keep that in mind if you do enjoy this show today. All right, great. So here we are. We're presented with Core Gadget 3. Not a lot has changed from the first iteration in terms of looks, but I can tell you it definitely has a good vibe and a good feel here. All right, so here we've got the London. They have done some pretty major upgrades since the first iteration. Like I'm pretty sure you didn't have what I'm about to show you. So you have this ability to play the beat in like this. So I'm just gonna show you. So there's our beat. And we can change the pattern and program. And sort of, if you go up and down, it sort of changes the complexity and the rhythms. So you just, you can do it like this. And then, of course, you can just do it like normal, right? So I've got my key down here, so you could... So we could just make our own beat. So why don't we actually, I like, I kind of want to do something like in that rhythm-y sort of style. So let's just, uh, you know, that Spanish Latino uh, beat there. So we just press record and we're going to get a, or we press record and then we hit play, which will um, record arms the track and we press play. We'll get a countdown metronome. Here we go. Two, three, four. I forgot to let, <laughs> I stupidly forgot to uh, leave the metronome on, which we can do down the bottom here. So hopefully my body's not in the way. Actually, it is in the way. Let's make this smaller. Cause the arm, you can't even see the transport's there behind my, behind me. That's all there is though. Just in case you're wondering, this is the transport, record, play, stop, and loop functions down the bottom. Uh, it looks like it's quantized it for me, which is pretty cool. No, we don't want to record again. Let's play that back. Just make sure we're all in. We can just, I mean, we can just draw it in like this. Can draw it in. This is what I wanted to show you though. This 
This freaking program is very, very quick to use. All right, so here's our little beat. Take the metronome off, we don't need it. That's a little fast for me, actually. Uh, so your tempo is, actually, we just need to move some things around here, sorry, just so I can see everything. Actually, it's been a while. This is, this is kind of, this is kind of good for me. It's like a refresher. So you can expand, actually, this is, this is what's cool. You can expand it, you can have a GUI like this. You can change your views here as well. So you can just have your mixer, you can have your gadget, or you can just have your gadget like that. I uh, can get rid of your gadget and just have like, you know, your big uh, MIDI notes that are happening here. Uh, so it's really good. It's a very versatile program for sort of getting around and doing what you need to do. All right, so tempo is down here near the metronome. 125 is a little bit fast. I want to, uh, let's pull it down. Oh, it's 128 at the moment. I think 110 would probably do this sort of, yeah, 120. All right, so let's uh, get another amazing instrument here. Let's use one of the new ones, so Santa Ana here. Sample back our guitar. <laughs> I don't know why the MIDI is controlling both the London and the Santa Ana. That's actually kind of hilarious. But uh, I guess if I hit record here, there's a freaking helicopter going overhead too. Hopefully you can't hear that in the show today. Uh, but hopefully this will just give us the guitar playback. So here we go. Actually, so we want a, a slightly longer um, section for this. So we need to increase the bars probably, let's try maybe four, just keep it simple, four bars. All right, here we go. Go back to the top. What was it? Oh, we'll try that. That sounds pretty cool. And this is, now I've gone off the Latino beat and I'm doing like some kind of grunge or something. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know why that's recording that into the London. That is actually hilarious. For some reason, I don't know why that's doing that. It's armed the London as well which we don't really want. Can we, yeah, let's get rid of that. And we'll put that beat. <laughs> That's a really good sounding sample instrument. We can go through some of the presets here as well. Let's try this one. Just gonna find one we like. Oh, I really like this. This is kind of groovy. Actually, that's sort of gone back more to our Latino vibes, which is really cool. All right, let's add some bass to this. I like the Miami. This gives you sort of like that wobble bass. Or well, there is some more authentic, actually the Madrid. This one is really cool. How good is that? Freaking, you're getting core gadget goodness here. Absolutely incredible. All right, I worked out a little workaround with, uh, basically when I was pressing the keys, it was sort of triggering all the other tracks, but I just essentially went into the MIDI section here. Oh, if I can move out of the way, there you go. Um, and then I just turned the MIDI input to no input on the other tracks. All right, good. So now we've got our Madrid uh, bass uh, gadget here. So let's try and figure out a nice little bass line we can run. All right, I'll just do something funky like that. Sounds pretty good. It should tempo sync for me, but we'll see. Here we go. There 
There we go. And it should be tempo synced. Velocity may vary just based on the way I played it, but we can also fix the velocity on this thing as well, which we'll be able to show in a sec. There's your velocity there. Let's have a look. I would turn record um, off. Here we play it back. Might just change the velocity on these. Now I could actually, essentially I could select all, bring them all up like that. Maybe just that one need to come up a bit. Bring those up. I mean, I don't mind having variations in the velocity. It makes it sound a bit more real, especially with a realistic bass sounding instrument like this. Let's go through some of the presets though. And yeah, let's have a listen. That's pretty fat. Whoa, that's nice as. That's so nice. Okay, I really love the J the J pick. That I really love the J pick. Dude, I'm vibing, vibing big time. We haven't even gone into the mixer section. We haven't even shown you that you can apply effects to this thing yet. We're just we're just having fun. You can add swing, of course, to the tempo as well. You can do all of those things. I, hopefully it's easy to see here on the screen, but um, I, I find the layout on this really nice. And again, it is clip-based production. So like essentially I could copy this beat down, like we could start making our next thingy and I could just copy one there, see? I don't know if you can see in the top left there, that's where you would start building, you know, your clips. So your next clip would be this one, we can get rid of that. So when it goes into the next one, the Santa arm is gonna turn off, you ready? So he's got the bass and the beat. Do you know what I mean? It's clip based in that sense. But what I want to do, and especially when I'm working in Cog Gadget, I'm sort of just trying to get some ideas down, like get my main sort of, what is my purpose here when I'm using Cog Gadgets to get the main sort of idea down, like the big, you know, the big sort of part of the track, the chorus, I guess you could say. And then we sort of strip it back from there and we can build a song or flesh it out using this clip uh, bass style recording, which I won't fully go into today. I just more or less want to show you Core Gadget and see, show you how smooth and awesome it actually runs here. I'm freaking Core Gadget 3. This is an incredible update. They they sort of like they didn't change it way too much from the original version. They just they just made everything better, in my opinion. All right, let's just let's keep adding. Let's keep adding gadgets. Very smooth, like it doesn't use it doesn't seemingly use a lot of CPU to this program. It's very nicely. I just beautifully conducted. Again, Cog fanboy though, so you may be getting a biased opinion. Yes, I'm your Cog YouTuber if you want to say that as well. Let's check out. Uh, I feel like I haven't seen this Sydney. Maybe Sydney's new as well. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, cool. So this is a. So we got it again. I got to do that thing. We turn off. Turn off the bass. But um, wow, we got a sample back player. What? This is definitely new, dude. This is new. Oh, I like that. Wish I could open that up. Oh, that's so good. Can I expand on that? What? Oh, I want to expand on that so much. Is it possible? Let me just have a look. This is new, guys. This is new for me. If we're going to expand on the keys, that is a hot... That sample is hot as hell. Uh, I don't know if you can, sorry. I wanted to expand it across my keys because that is just sexy as hell. I'm finding these samples don't kick off at the start though. So maybe, uh, maybe hold them all down at once. Oh, that's sick.
I mean, I gotta say, I'm loving it. It's not gonna go with my track though. So if we play my, yeah, not in the right key and so forth. Let's go. Okay, let's go through some more. See what else we got. A lot of fun though. These ones are very nicely. How good are they? They're just not gonna be in key. That's all. Oh, I like this. This is cool. You ready? What? What's going on? Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's crazy. That's really a lot of fun. What? What is that? I gotta press it at the right time. Oh, we're totally going off topic here from our track. All right, anyway, that's the Sydney. I, I'm not sure how I'm going to put this into this actual track we're doing. It's sort of all in the wrong key, and I don't know if you can expand. If you can, and you're watching this, and you know a bit more about Core Gadget 3 or these new gadgets in particular than me, leave a comment down below because I freaking love that gadget. I just don't know how I can use it right now. But yeah, that's definitely got to be a newie because that, wow, that blew me away. All right, let's keep going. Uh, let's look for a synth, I guess. Let's see. There is so much to choose from. I really like the Chang Mei. Maybe we can check that out. And then I'll show you some of these 8-bit, 16-bit engine um, synths as well, which is three of now. You've got the Kingston, Kamada, and Ebena. Amazing stuff. Then you got some polyphonic and monophonic synthesizers as well based on their uh, old-school sort of Korg synths from the 80s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, but let's go... What is this, actually? The Vancouver. Dude, this looks cool. It's like a... Oh, it's like a vocal synth. Vocal gadget, sorry. I feel like this is new, too. I mean, there's a lot of hidden surprises in here. I'm not going to lie. I've got different uh, effects here. Can we change the... Oh, yeah, you can. <laughs> Maybe we... Maybe we try and... What have I done? I've created a demon. <laughs> I don't know about that. Let's... I mean, cool. If you want to make some vocal-based music, you can definitely do it. I think I just want a synth. Let's go Chiang Mai. Here we go. Here we go. I think it's FM synthesis, this guy. Japanese pulse modulation. Okay, I was wrong. Sorry. But how good does this sound? Now the other cool thing is you do have scales and stuff as well. Uh, you got your or you got your freaking scales. This is the coolest thing from Korg, right? So if you had actually put in, I think you put in Korg mode. You get all that, like you get all that. But we're not gonna do that today. But anyway, it is there, and and that's a lot of fun too because I love the Korg scaling, the way they've set it up. But anyway, we're not gonna do that for today's show. We're just sort of gonna get in the scale of my track here. that sound though not gonna lie but i don't mind that melody so maybe we'll just try and get this one in that'll do what did we hit there we're on like two bars i think no turn that off we can change it back to two bars and then i'm really not happy with one of the notes there we played Oh, maybe it was was four bars. Sorry, excuse me. Yeah, that one there needs to come back up here. There we go. Maybe that one. Maybe there. All right, cool. So we got as you could hear there. We actually have a bit of 
Um, oh, there's a bit of swing here we can add to it. Let me add some swing. Oh, it does apply to the whole track. Not bad, you can loosen it up a bit. I don't know if you can see that, it's down there, it's very small. I'm playing with a swing just here. Just, how do I do that? <laughs> there, somewhere. All right. I really don't like this sound though, I'm not gonna lie, let's see what we got. Dude, this is sounding, this track is sounding very production music-y, so I am sorry. I think it's the guitar, the bit, I think it just sounds way too production-y, like an advertisement, so I apologize. I don't know where I was going with this. Hey, we started from scratch, all right? I just had the idea and I wanted to show off some of the new gadgets in Core Gadget 3. I digress. Anyway, let's have a listen. Frequency down. Yeah, we've got a kind of a very organic vibe. Like you got the actual real sample guitar and you got the real sample bass. I guess I guess what we can do now is maybe just show you some of the more out there sort of instruments. So you've got Miami gadget here, which is like, oh, we have to turn off this guy here. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that's all about. I feel like there's must be a way. I mean, you got it here. Oh, you can also select the MIDI up here as well. But anyway, as long as we have, might want to turn that one off too, actually. As long as you have the other ones MIDI off, you won't get any trouble, basically. So now we're looking at Miami, which is that nice sort of wobble bass. Man, I could do this show all day. I love the core gadget. And you got some pretty cool presets. I don't know if this will go on the track. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Actually, you got some cool LFOs and stuff on this instrument as well. So you got this sort of LFO-y type stuff. Anyway, I won't go too much into that. It's not going to suit the track. I think before we wrap up the show, just quickly wanted to show you, you do have effects, of course, and you've got a, a bus as well. So you got your reverb going through to a bus here. So for example, um, this Chiang Mai, we could send it to the reverb, send it to the reverb more. You know, you can really drench it up. Uh, if we just actually make the mixer section, get rid of our gadget, get rid of that. No, get rid of that. No, there we go. So now we're just looking at the mixer section here, just focusing on that. Actually, it'd be nice if you if I put it there so you can see it a bit better. There we go. Make it smaller just for this part of the show here. Uh, just quickly showing you. So yeah, you've got your bus here. You've got your uh, left and right. You can pan it as well. We'll get it back to center there. Um, you can solo. So you've just got your one instrument. You can add the reverb to it if you want. And then uh, down here, you got your obviously your MIDI in and out, which I've already shown you. Um, and your main section, get out of reverb. You can turn on your limiter as well. And you got a D max here. So this is pretty cool. This wasn't included. I think this came in like Core Gadget 2, but this is like a, a, a crazy ass compressor type thing. It looks kind of like one of those, um, you know, like the in the airplane, in the cockpit of an airplane. Um, you're putting your pitch up here. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, that your accelerator, whatever you call it in an airplane. But have a listen to this so we can dial it right in. Oof. Yeah, we're just we're gonna get distortion land, but like if you're making some like really hard trance or or techno or that sort of thing, you can play with the D Max. I won't have that. We can just have a limiter. That'll just be a soft limiter. Might just turn that off. That's kind of annoying. Um, <laughs> but yeah, essentially you can do everything you need to do in your mixer here. And the whole idea behind Gadget is yes, you build you build your sections down. So your next section might be this. You know, and you build your song as you go down, more or less. Uh, bottom left here, you've got your functions. 
where you can change, uh, tells you what you can do. You can delete, change, duplicate, or freeze. If you're using up too many of the resources of your computer, you can actually freeze your gadget if the gadget has been a bit CPU hoggy. But as far as I can tell, I mean, this is on an M1 chip. It runs really, really smoothly as you have seen on the show today. Without a doubt in my mind, how freaking smooth it runs is very good indeed. So that's your function down there as well. Okay, so up the top, you've got your obviously importing, your opening, your new, you can start a new one, you can export, uh, open from the iCloud drive or save into the iCloud drive. Sorry, and then you got export. You can export the project into Ableton Live, which is a really nice feature, or you can export it as a MIDI file or audio file. Both of those options are greatly appreciated to have. I'm just gonna expand my window back out there. But pretty much all in all, just as a very quick shallow dive, I, I call them shallow dives instead of deep dives. That's pretty much called Gadget 3 in a nutshell. It is a lot of fun, very easy to use, very smooth, very quick to get a song idea down. And I absolutely love it. As you can see, I've just made something super quick here. But I also enjoy like working on a project on my iPad and then bringing it over to here or loading it up in my DAW of choice. It is a lot of fun and very easy to use. All right, guys, let me know what you thought of Cog Gadget 3 today. Do you enjoy the software? Have you used it before? Are you thinking of upgrading? Is the upgrade worth it with those new gadgets? In my opinion, it's not really the gadgets that make this upgrade worth it. I just feel like overall, they've just refined this piece of software now that, that if you do have like the latest M1 chips, uh, if you're using it on Mac OS, of course, as a desktop version, I just feel like this piece of software is really refined now and it just works really smoothly and really nice. And with the addition of those VST3 plugins, hell yeah, this makes the update 1 billion percent worth it. So if you're after it for those purposes, definitely upgrade. Those gadgets, they're cool, but they're not, I don't think they're worth the upgrade. I'm just gonna be real, I'm keeping it real with you. I don't think the gadgets themselves are worth the upgrade. But what I said before, it definitely makes it worth the upgrade. So it really depends what you want this upgrade for. But yeah, I'm a core gadget fanboy as well. So, you know, don't maybe don't listen to me. Just, just look at what you saw here today and do you like it? And yes, if you do, then great. All right, guys, that's it for the show today. That's enough of my rambling for one, one week at least. Uh, make sure to leave a like on the way out before you leave. I know I already said that before. And hit subscribe if you haven't already, if you're new to the channel. If you stayed this long and you've watched it and you're up to this point, you may, might as well hit subscribe because you, there's obviously something you like about the show. And before I go, don't forget, we'll have the affiliate link down below for Contact7. Make sure to click that link. You're supporting the channel and also spotting boy Kim's channel live. And of course you're getting contact seven at half price, freaking amazing instrument and plug in there for native instruments. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. That's called gadget three, just a quick overview. We might do some more videos on this in the future because there's just a lot, a real lot to cover. And I just, I can't do it in my regular show time. All right guys, we'll be back next week with something new and amazing of course. Until then, peace out, boo. Hey, thanks for listening to the Emlyn In The Mix podcast. Here, you will find all the latest in music technology, software and hardware, interviews and more. Also, don't forget to check out the Emlyn In The Mix YouTube channel today. Till next time, keep it real.